Hello motivators, Timothy McCain here. And today I have a video that I really believe is gonna help you at some moment in your life. Each and every one of us has had a loved one or friend pass away. Grieving in that moment at time is never easy. It's not a formula, it's not take two and call me in the morning to get past it, to get through it, to get over it. But I wanna give you some advice and some tips to help you during that time. This week, uh, it very hits close to home as we remember uh, our very good friend, Will Hernandez has passed away and has gone to heaven. And so I wanna give you some, um, some advice, some tips that'll help you along the way of dealing with death and the advice of going through going through grieving first is this it's you got to give yourself permission to hurt that's right give yourself permission to hurt you don't have to walk around feeling like you have to be strong for everybody else that you keep all the pain within you you like a soda bottle being shaken that you feel like you can't let anything go you can't you can't process anything you can you have to be strong you hold back your tears you 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 put on you put on a on on a on a on a face of of uh, of that that nothing is affecting you and maybe your process may look different. Maybe your 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 emotions may look different. I'm not saying it look like a thing for everybody else, but you should give yourself permission to feel. And I understand, family. I've been in uh, try, I've been in many hospitals, many hospice rooms, many times people have just passed away or or giving their or giving or their last breath. And so I understand there has to be conversations that must be that must be had. Their funeral arrangement, things of that nature. So someone has to be able to speak on behalf. But I understand that. But even in the midst of that, give yourself permission to feel. Give yourself permission to hurt. Give yourself permission to process. It may it looks different for many, from everybody. It may not, your one person may process through tears. Another person may process through song. One person may process through writing things out. Another person may, may just feel like, I need to go for a run, I need to go for a jog, I need to go for a run. But I can I encourage you, don't self-medicate the pain by trying to drink in a way, or smoke in a way, or doing the things of nature. Because it's not, it's not helping you process through it, it's not helping you overcome it. It's just dampening the feelings to help you to feel like that you don't have to deal with it but if you don't deal with it, you don't meet it face to face if you don't confront it it will be there for the rest of your life and so i encourage you family give yourself permission to feel give yourself permission to process that's number one number two realize that you will have a lot of questions that you may not have answers to and that's okay you have a lot of questions you may not have answers to why this why me why him why her why now? They were this young. Why does that happen? And you and you may it may you may dig yourself into a greater pit trying to figure out all the answers, girl, driving yourself crazy mentally uh, because you got to figure things out. But can I encourage you during those moments and the, where especially where it's fresh, especially where it just happened, just be be just process just be right and i'm sure the answers may help and, and there may be some questions you can have answers to you will have answers to but it's the pursuit of like i just need to know need to know they know they need to know why this god why now why this and what happens that if we're trying to find answers we will start trying to create our own solutions when there and then there becomes blame you're pointing fingers well you should have did this well my grandma would still be alive and you would have done this well this person would have been alive you'd have done this well you never liked them anyway you know what I'm saying so you can see how all the questions because questions create uh, uh, and a, uh, a thought process of trying to figure out an answer. You will create your own hypothesis. Uh, you know what I mean? Trying to trying to trying to discover why, and you know, and it, it just is. It may not be the best time to do that. Again, and so I, I I I encourage you to just remember that you may not have all the answers to all the questions you may have. People will lovingly come alongside you, speak to you, and sometimes may feel like words aren't adequate to really be a remedy to the pain that you're going through. But I encourage you, celebrate the ones around you and, and, and give yourself permission to realize that you don't have to have all the answers. Number three is come together, don't break apart. I am super sad that I see this all the time, uh, being being uh, traveling and going to hospitals and hospice things of that nature, where the times where family is supposed to come together is a time that sometimes they tear each other apart. And so make up in your mind during these moments of grieving that you're going to fight for each other, not fight each other. That the Bible says maybe every make every effort to live in unity through the bonds of peace. It's a time to fight for each other. It's but in the moments of grieving, moments of pain, there's something that happens called. 
called psychological disposition or psychological displacement. It's it's simply way to explain it is when is when you say you're at work you get yelled at at the boss and so you run home and you speed really fast you honk on the horn when the moment uh, the light turns green because someone took a millisecond to, uh, longer than than you wanted and you get home and you slam the door you kick the dog and yell at the kids it's a displacement it's a transference of stress and during those moments and obviously it's a high stress moment it's a painful moment and uh, so then the family members will be at each other's throats siblings will fight if you would have done this or you didn't do this or you didn't like her anyway or you never visit her or whatever that's not the time to hash things out that's the time to build each other up fight for each other don't fight each other right and so lastly a uh, uh, next family is this is give time to process there's not a formula. There's not take two, call me in the morning. It's not a formula, it's not a duration. It's not one week is enough, two weeks is enough, a month is enough. Every person is different. And so I encourage you, make sure you don't judge yourself or you judge your duration by someone else's duration. And make sure that if you're the one on the other side of that pain, that you're not judging that individual by how long it's taking them to mourn because there's not a time duration. There's not a process. So there's not a, there's, I'm sorry, there's not a, yeah, a, 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 a time to get over. Over it and some whatever reason some people may feel like they bounce back faster right but just know family get, there's not a formula that at some moment you will you're gonna have to live on you mean your your bills are gonna call your boss and say hey you got to get back to work right uh, but what do you do in those moments you're gonna have to get up you're gonna have to move forward right but 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 mentally and emotionally and spiritually you know what I mean there there's a link there may not be a particular length of time but, this, but every single moment, it should be a moment you're striving every day to stand up, to move forward, to move on, to do, to live life in memory of, not to, not to build an emotional casket at the moment of the person's loss, but making sure you're creating a garden so their legacy becomes a, becomes a, a reminder, the fruit that you're going to eat in your future because you're going to keep living, living on. The, the way they model love for you, you're going to model love for others. The way they, the way they model uh, faith for you, you're going to model it for others. It's going to garden that's going to grow in your memory and your heart so you can bear fruit so other people can eat it. That is how, family, you live on in memory of somebody. Right, and so next family is this, and so we talked about uh, is uh, build a, a system of people around you, um, and this is important because when someone is first dealing with loss, dealing with pain, the shock of it, there's many people will come along uh, around them, people that may they may not didn't even know, uh, people will go on their social media and love on them and talk to them, and it's great to have those moments, but you will witness and maybe you'll find out as duration and time goes by that you may seem like that it may be get less and less and less, less phone calls, less messages, whatnot. And it's important that you build community, you build a, 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 a system of people, a community of people that, that you give access to your life. That's not just gonna reach out to you days after it, but weeks after it and months after. You set up time courage, you set up times uh, in your account that you're gonna that you're gonna talk to each other. They're gonna ask you how you're doing. You'll pray for each other, and they will lift each other up. This is super important. And lastly, and I can't stress this, is stand on your faith. I'm a Christian, and I'm Will Hernandez, individual who who went to be with glory, went to went to glory, went to be with Jesus, uh, rejoicing with his with his wife who passed away uh, years and years ago up in heaven. Right? I I stand on that faith. The Bible says, "Be absent for the body, be present with the Lord." And so uh, I'm, I'm as I'm gonna be sharing at his celebration, his funeral, his homecoming service this week. I know that I am speaking of an individual that I'm going to see one day. I know it's not it's not goodbye, it's see you later. And so uh, it's important to stand on your faith. It's important to stand and read scriptures and to pray and to build your faith up. And I have found a community of people who's around you build your faith. I am thankful that Will was a believer and I'm thankful that I am as well because it gives me an anchor of hope and it gives many others an anchor of hope that helps them to process even during these moments and so uh, this is a video I just I just felt it's very important to make and it's maybe this mean doesn't mean much to you right now because you're not going through loss but I believe it will help you a lot later so this is just six tips six, six advice that may help you along the way I have a much longer video I just made on my podcast and I encourage you to to subscribe
subscribe and to follow my me on podcast from from iTunes, from Spotify, from Sprecker, from 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 iHeartRadio, uh, from every avenue of podcast. I'm on there. Tim T T M Motivation, just like this YouTube channel. I have a lo- longer video that you need to listen to that really help you as I hash out these things to help you during these moments. And so, motivators, this channel is meant to be an oasis of hope in a desert of hopelessness. And as you're walking through your grieving moment, as you're walking through your pain, as you're dealing with death, I pray for you and I hope that you overcome, that you continue to move on, that you that you live in memory of, like I said, it's a garden that will grow in your heart, that the aspects and that they have lived, the characteristics, the model before you, you continue to live on. That's how you live in memory of somebody. So, so, don't, so don't drop an anchor, raise your sail, but only you will know when that time will be. God bless you.